Comstar Special Individual Database. Access The Bounty Hunter. Almost everyone in the Inner Sphere and in the periphery has heard of the Bounty Hunter. Even people in the clan homeworlds have heard of him. Partly through the Holovid series that took the Inner Sphere by storm, and partly through stories that have begun to circulate again thanks to his reappearance a decade after fading from the public eye. The Bounty Hunter has once more captured the imagination and fear of countless individuals throughout the human sphere. Here, to the best of our abilities, is the true story. The History Bounty Hunters have been part of human civilization for as long as any individual has had a price on his head. Throughout his history, Bounty Hunters have been reviled and praised, though rarely respected. Beyond those who make their living by hunting their fellow man, few people take comfort in the notion of one man hunting another for money, and even many in the field find their own work distasteful. Of course, when dead or alive bounties are placed, corpses are easier to bring in than live bodies, and dead men tell no tales. Yet, throughout the ages, bounty hunting has been an extremely lucrative, if dangerous, profession. The popularity of bounty hunting has ebbed and flowed along with the relative lawlessness of society. Following humanity's exodus to the stars, the bounty hunter became more and more important as criminals took to the anonymity of the fledgling colonies. During the centuries before the Star League, the profession flourished, especially once pirates and other outlaws began to prey on colonists unable to defend themselves. Outlaws quickly began to rank themselves by the total bounties placed on their heads. Likewise, bounty hunters had their own social strata based on the bounties they brought in, and the number of corpses. The formation of the Star League brought the era of the Bounty Hunter to a close. While some still made a living hunting down fugitives, the Bounty Hunter lifestyle essentially died. Until the fall of the Star League, that is. During Kerensky's drive toward terror, Bounty Hunters were in greater and greater demand as the SLDF concentrated their energies on bringing down Stefan Amaris. Soon afterward, when the succession was engulfed the Inner Sphere, the Bounty Hunter once again became a necessary evil. Somewhat surprisingly, throughout the ages of Bounty Hunter, only a handful of these individuals have gained any amount of fame. Sen Urori, Colonel Octavius Mortimer, Judge Harold the Deathbringer. But none are more famous, or infamous, than the Bounty Hunter. The Myth no one is exactly sure when the Bounty Hunter first appeared. Stories of the Bounty Hunter began in the 2920s, when a masked individual piloting a green warhammer gained some notoriety by hunting down rogue mech warriors with prices on their heads. No one ever found out his name, but he brought in some of the biggest bounties of the time. Most of them dead, which is likely why stories of his exploits spread so far, and so quickly. After a century and a half, fact-finding is more than a little difficult, but stories of this individual taking down entire mech battalions by himself are certainly tall tales, though they may be rooted in fact. The tale most often told is one in which this mysterious bounty hunter brought in the bodies of 29 men who had robbed a bank on El Giza. He allegedly collected millions in bounties and later sold their mechs for even more. Though the story cannot be fully verified, enough evidence suggests that the tales may not be far off the mark. The man with the green warhammer apparently disappeared from public view after collecting the El Giza bounties. Three decades later though, in 2957, a man in either an environment suit or a full Star League era mech warrior combat suit piloting a green warhammer appeared and claimed the bounties on a group of pirates that had been preying on worlds in the Principality of Regulus. Since then, the tale of the bounty hunter has grown to titanic proportions. The Bounty Hunter, as that masked individual quickly became known, spent years working solo, travelling across the Inner Sphere and the periphery, tracking only those criminals with the highest bounties. More often than not, he brought in their corpses. The Bounty Hunter worked alone for more than two decades, but by the 2980s he'd assembled a team of mech warriors to aid him in taking down the biggest prey. Originally, that team may well have been temporary, assembled from friendly Bounty Hunters and or mercenaries, only when additional manpower was needed. That had changed by the 2990s. 
Prior to that point, the Bounty Hunters team was different every time they were seen in public, and their mechs never sported the same paint jobs. In fact, not even the Bounty Hunter's own mech remained a constant. At times he piloted a Warhammer, while other times he rode a Grasshopper or even a Griffin. Eventually, the team settled to between four and six members, including the Bounty Hunter, with each mech frequently painted the same green, though many times the Bounty Hunter's comrades sported other colours on their mechs. The Bounty Hunter did more to change the way he had previously operated. In addition to using cohorts, he began to take on a much darker image. Rather than just hunting the worst criminals with the largest bounties on their heads, he took to accepting contracts for hunting down just about anyone for money. This soon led the Bounty Hunter to accept contracts from the Great Houses to capture or kill notable enemy mech warriors, generals, and even businessmen and engineers. By the start of the new millennium, the man who had gained notoriety as one of the people who could bring in the most dangerous criminals was reviled throughout the Inner Sphere and Periphery. Where once mech warriors dreamed of working with him, now they cursed him for hunting and killing others of their kind, for no other reason than money. Worse still, the bounty hunter embraced the image. He began to display monetary symbols on his mech, letting all know where his true loyalties lay. From that point on, the bounty hunter became a blight on humanity. At least according to the stories. He killed anyone who got in his way. He lied, double-crossed, and stole, and he did so with glee. One of the earliest stories portrays him and his mech warriors landing on the Federated Sun's world of Markerson in 2996, killing two AFFS generals and everyone else in their command post, including a host of staff and non-combat personnel, and then stealing their mechs before sneaking off-world. While travelling to claim their bounties for that assault in the Draconis Combine, they slipped onto LeBlanc, where they bargained with a new and untested mercenary unit to provide them a safe transport into the Combine. In return, the Hunters agreed to arrange a contract with the DCMS for that Merc unit. The Bounty Hunter and his compatriots posed as members of the unit, but as soon as they'd safely crossed over into the Combine, they killed everyone belonging to the mercenary unit and then took their mechs and even their dropship. Other stories recount exploits of the Free Worlds League in 2998 and 2099, when the Bounty Hunter tracked down officers and popular mech warriors presenting their heads, as the story goes, to then-Colonel Katrina Steiner. Still more speak of events in 3005, when he apparently turned on his Steiner benefactors to hunt Lyra nobles, politicians, and generals. He also allegedly took alternating contracts with the Federated Sons and Capellan Confederation to kill or kidnap notables on both sides of the border, always one-upping his own deeds at the behest of the side he'd just targeted. And then there was his infamous run-ins with the Black Widow, Natasha Kerensky. The first took place in 3014 on the world of Nova Roma. Both the Bounty Hunter and Kerensky were hunting those loyal to Janos Marek when the Bounty Hunter turned on the Widow leaving her for dead, and claiming her Marauder, which he took over as his own signature battle mech. Kerensky lived through the ordeal and vowed to exact vengeance, some even saying how she somehow got her hands on his old Warhammer and began to use that as her trademark mech. The second recorded run-in took place on LeBlanc in 3024. The exact details of this meeting remain unknown, though rumour has it that Duke Michael Hassett Kadavian attempted to lure Wolf's Dragoons through Kerensky into a contract with him, but apparently the bounty hunter killed two of Kerensky's mech warriors out of sheer spite. The final meeting amazingly saw the two temporarily allying on Bennett III in 3027 when their employers, Kerensky working for the Combine and the bounty hunter working for the Fedsons, left them both without support on a planet full of enemies. Once they escaped that world, they went their own way, though the animosity between the two apparently never cooled. Those are just a few of the most famous of the Bounty Hunter's exploits. He worked as a free agent throughout the Fourth Succession War, accepting contracts from each of the five great houses at various times. After the war, he uncharacteristically began hunting prominent Combine officers, apparently without contract, only to spend the next several years in the employ of the Combine. By the time of the War of 3039, the Bounty Hunter was once again selling his services to the highest bidder, and displaying no mores. He continued this way throughout the 3040s, serving as a proxy in the Cold War between the Great Houses. But when the clans appeared, the Inner Sphere needed a hero, and the Bounty Hunter stepped up to accept the challenge. Whether simply for the money and the prestige, or for more noble reasons, he did take on the clans, and even gave the Inner Sphere a couple of victories. 
He claimed three solo kills in as many months in late 3050, though only at the cost of his comrades and his trademark marauder. In return, he captured a smoked jaguar mad cat, riding that into battle and into a new era of fame. Suddenly, the most hated mech warrior in the Inner Sphere was a hero once again. Then, just as quickly as he'd begun to gain fame in a new signature battle mech, he disappeared. Some reporting him dead, some reporting him captured, and for years after, many people kept alive a hope that he would resurface, but nothing came of it. The bounty hunter was finished. Or was he? The Man Who was the bounty hunter? That question has perplexed countless individuals across the human sphere for well over a century. Unfortunately, scant few hard facts out there can lead to any conclusion, which means there are almost as many theories as there are individuals looking for answers. Certainly, no reputable researchers believe that there's only been a single individual bounty hunter. After all, such a person would have to be more than 110 years old at the time of his disappearance in 3051. Impossible, based on the trivid that does exist of the bounty hunter climbing out of the Mad Cat in 3050. But that leaves open the question of who these bounty hunters were, and how they came into possession of the suit, and the Green Marauder. The most common answer to this question is that the identity is passed down through a family of mech warriors. At the height of the Third Succession War, when the bounty hunter first surfaced, the ranks of dispossessed far outnumbered those who still had battle mechs. Any mech warrior unfortunate enough to be dispossessed would do just about anything to regain a battle mech, which is partly why the profession of bounty hunting grew to such heights during this time. Many have deduced that only a dispossessed mech warrior could hunt others with the detached vitriol that the bounty hunter exhibits. On the other hand, the bounty hunter didn't show this bloodthirsty nature until the last decade of the 30th century. Many blame this change on a personality switch when the old bounty hunter retired and a new individual took their place. In any event, it's certain that there have been many bounty hunters. Countless individuals have come forward through the years, either claiming to have been the bounty hunter or to know who they were. Unsurprisingly, none of these claims have ever been proven, though some appear to have led researchers close to the truth. Every one of these leads has come to a dead end, however, including a few corpses with indeterminate cause of death. While the most common theory is that the persona was passed down from generation to generation in a particular family, with the Varnays and the Marex being the two most often suggested as the genesis of the bounty hunter, a notion currently gaining popularity is that the bounty hunter persona is given up or even sold every few years to a member of the bounty hunter's team. Precious few facts have been found to back up the theory, other than second and third hand rumour and gut feeling. Rumours suggest that candidates from Archon Katrina Steiner to presenter Marshal Anastasius Fox to Chancellor Sun Tzu Lao have all spent time as the character. The most persistent rumours say that former Combine warlord Taishu Michino Ketsuna and former FedSun's intelligence advisor Quintus Allard have each spent a number of years posing as this masked mech warrior. While those rumours are highly unlikely, they are representative of the stories that have spread around the human sphere. The Legend Reborn the legend of the bounty hunter had just about reached mythical proportions when suddenly the bounty hunter burst back onto the scene. But the question is, is this the real bounty hunter? When he disappeared in 3051, hundreds of stories circulated purporting to explain what happened to him, but none of them could ever be proven. Despite more than a decade of concerted investigation, there was no trace of him. He simply vanished, and by all accounts after landing on the world of Raselhag. Then, at the height of the Fedcom Civil War, the bounty hunter reappeared. He didn't come back to any fanfare, nor did he seek media coverage. Beginning in 3064, the story of a mysterious mech warrior in a full body suit and piloting a green madcap began to circulate around the Lyran Alliance and then the Chaos March. At first, that story was buried amid the chaos of the Civil War, but as the war ground down, interstellar media outlets began to pick up on the tales of this new bounty hunter. Before long, the legend of the fearless and fearsome bounty hunter was reborn. The first tale of the new bounty hunter to make the rounds was an account of how he turned over two significant lieutenants of John Dundee, the public leader of the most recent Free Sky Revolt, to General Caesar Steiner, and later how he snuck onto Tikhonov to capture General Nadine Kilson, who apparently hasn't been heard from since being turned over to Archon Catherine Steiner Davian's government. Since that time, the Bounty Hunter has once again formed a team, and has been seen all across the Inner Sphere. At the same time, there's some question as to how many Bounty Hunters there are. 
While every incarnation of the Bounty Hunter travels in a modified mule-class dropship, one group is centred around a Mad Cat, while another is fronted by a Marauder 2. Both teams also include a Shadowhawk and a Falconer. Furthermore, all the mechs are painted the same green, and the lead mechs are decorated with the same credit symbols that made the earlier Bounty Hunter so infamous. The chaos of the Fedcom Civil War has made it impossible to compare sighting dates and locations of these two different groups with any amount of certainty. They could well be the same group, or just operating with different mechs, or it could be two separate groups. For now, no one really knows. Answers, or more questions? After all these years, the only thing we know is that there are more questions than answers about who the Bounty Hunter really is. Certainly, someone out there must know the truth, along with many who, if they could all come together to share what they know, might be able to piece this truth together. To date, however, we are only left with reports of scattered sightings, legends that have undoubtedly grown considerably over the past 150 years, and rumours and innuendo. All we really know is this. The Bounty Hunter, as he's known, has begun operating in 2957, though perhaps as early as 2920. He's never taken off the full body suit and helmet in public, and no one has ever produced any pictures of them or been able to describe him. Almost certainly, multiple individuals took on the Bounty Hunter persona. Historically, he piloted a green marauder and surrounded himself with a select group of allies. He was an extremely skilled mech warrior, as were his comrades, and would perform almost any contract for any employer, so long as the money was right, with no obvious pangs of conscience. In short, he was the perfect killer, and he never lacked for clients. Apart from appearance and modus operandi, there is nothing to suggest that the Bounty Hunter is at all related to the Bounty Hunter of, of history. On the other hand, except for an almost 15 year break from the public eye, there's nothing to suggest that the current Bounty Hunter isn't the old Bounty Hunter. Today, reporters and intelligence agents throughout the Inner Sphere and Periphery are scrambling to find out more about this character. If the rumours can be believed, this latest incarnation is every bit as ruthless and deadly as the Bounty Hunter of Legend, which only fuels the rumours. Within the past few months, two separate and wholly unverifiable rumours have made the rounds. One, saying the Bounty Hunter carried out a death sentence against Archon Catherine Stein of Davian, and the other, claiming he captured Lieutenant General Annette Leyland and the remains of her 5th Fedcom RCT and turned them over to the AFFS. As with so many Bounty Hunter stories, no hard fact exists to back them up. But that never stopped a good story from turning into a legend. And when it's all said and done, that's all the Bounty Hunter is. Legend. Because the real story can never equal a century and a half of tall tales told around the campfire.